We built great new dams which brought the miracle of electricity to millions of our people. These were some of our accomplishments, but there were others not so creditable. We turned our backs on the League of Nations. We passed the Tariff Act to set a higher wall of isolation around us. We encouraged lawlessness with the farce of prohibition. But in spite of these mistakes, we never had a thought of losing our free institutions. John Q. Public still ran the country. He had his choice of voting for Dewey, Wilkie, Roosevelt, or anybody else. In Germany, they had the choice of voting for Hitler, Hitler, or Hitler. Over here, John Q. still read what he pleased. And although he heard of books being burned in other countries, he would have laughed if anyone had told him his books would ever be burned. And on Sunday, if he felt like it, John Q. went to any church he pleased. Most of all, he got a kick out of seeing his kids grow up. The average American was quite unconscious of the fact that some people had this in mind for the little John Q. children were being trained to kill, John Q's kids were giving their pennies to help them have life. And when we saw these men in the newsreels, quite often we laughed. To us, they looked like characters in a musical comedy. They weren't comic. They weren't funny. They were deadly serious. They were out for world conquest. And what made it doubly serious was that there were 70 million Japanese, 45 million Italians, and 80 million Germans, all hopped up with the same idea. This is our Deutsches Volk hilft dir selbst. Jeder soll helfen. Their leaders told them that they were supermen. Herrenfolk, the Nazis called them the master race, destined to rule all other peoples on Earth. Take a good look at these humorless men. These were to be the rulers of the ruling race. Obey us blindly, and you will attain your rightful place in the world. All other people will be your slaves. 
That's what they promised them. That Americans, Chinese, Russian, South Americans, all free peoples would work for them and make them rich. And how they ate it up. We shall restore the glory that was Rome. Today we rule Germany. Tomorrow the world. The Pacific is ours. It was inevitable that these countries should gang up on us. The little fellow is our pal, Curusu, who smiled his way into our hearts in December 1941. Here he and his friends are busy carving up the world in advance, staking out their claims. Take a good look at these claims. Here was the Italy that Mussolini took over in 1922. And almost his first act was to tell the Italians they were the rightful owners of Corsica, Nice, Savoia, Albania, Tunisia, Ethiopia, and a land corridor linking it with Libya. Later on, he had an even bigger dream. The old Roman Empire as it existed nearly 2,000 years ago to dominate all the lands adjoining the Mediterranean. Mare Nostrum, our sea, they called it, just as the ancient Romans did. As for the Japanese, they had some ambitions too. By 1920, they had grabbed off Formosa, Korea, and the southern half of the island of Sakhalin. Then Baron Gishi Tanaka, the prime minister, carefully set down Japanese aims in a document called the Tanaka Memorial. It was presented to the Emperor July 25th, 1927. Here was their dream. Manchuria for raw materials. China for manpower. Then a triumphant march through Indochina, Siam, Burma, India, the East Indies, and on through Australia and New Zealand. And in the north, all they claimed was that part of Russia east of Lake Baikal. That was to be the new order in Asia. Then the Japs would move eastward to crush the United States and really start their co-prosperity sphere. Now take a look at the fight the Nazis reserved for themselves. Here's the Germany Hitler walked into. And here's what he wanted. First, Europe under his complete political or economic control leaving Mussolini a share of the loot if he behaved himself. Then the drive to the east, through the rich oil lands of Iran and Iraq, into India. Another push south through Africa. Then from Dakar, jump off to meet the honorary Aryans who were to move in on South America through the Pacific. At the same time, start across from the Scandinavian countries to hook up with his bucktooth pals coming over from Siberia to join in the conquest of the United States. There it is, gents. All they left us was Shangri-La. And they'd claim that, too, if they knew where it was. 